The Coinsuris channel is pleased to have you back. As the court case nears its conclusion, which seems to be a test case against cryptocurrencies, reports begin to circulate claiming that Ripple and the US Securities and Exchange Commission have finally reached a resolution in their long-running dispute. Speculation has been flying on both sides over a possible agreement, the reports seem to have started within Ripple, which is currently facing a number of issues as a result of the SEC's claims against its native coin, XRP. While the charges did not emerge until late 2020, this followed financial authorities categorizing the firm as an unregistered security and commencing procedures in early 2014. When the SEC made its feelings known on December 22, 20 XRP, the cryptocurrency was looking good at around 70 cents per unit, thanks to its immense popularity in the US and UK. The temperature plummeted to 25 degrees Celsius in the 24 hours preceding the SEC's verdict. Price of XRP, which reached a high of $1.84 in April of last year, is currently trading at 0.7, demonstrating remarkable resilience in the face of the lawsuit. That is, in 2018, a new record high was achieved at $3.1 per share. The SECCC filed charges against Brad Garlinhouse and Chris Larson, co-founders of Ripple, in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. The SEC asserted that Ripple and its employees were engaged in the ongoing unregistered issuance of securities when they sold 1.3 billion XRP from 2013 to 2012. Authorities claim that throughout the seven-year period, a breach of Section 5 of the 1933 Securities Act occurred. Concerned that the case demonstrated regulatory overreach, the Garland House legal team wrote to Taurus, a federal judge, to express their concerns. Continuing, they listed numerous reasons why the SECCC's claims were unfounded. Fox Business guest Charles Gasparino, Liz Clayman, and Brad Garland House discussed recent comments made by Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell regarding the proper handling of cryptocurrencies yesterday. The interview's most intriguing comment came when, in response to a question on the Ripple's case's current status with the SEC, Garland House referenced an interview from the day before. While attempting to establish a legal boundary between currencies and securities, SEC CEO Gary Gensler stated in the interview that the agency anticipated losing some cases. Expert testimony, expert findings, and related subjects were due to conclude on Monday, according to him. Everything is still on track with the lawsuit. We are anticipating a swift decision from the court on one or more of the cases now before it. Things have been moving at a snail's pace, though. As far as I can tell, Gary Gensler has long advocated the idea that Bitcoin is similar to the Wild West. This is definitely not the Wild West. Is the quality of any of the actors lacking? There are villains in every role, that much is true. It appears that this matter is going to be resolved, given Gary Chancellor's admission that the SEC anticipates losing certain cases and the comments made by Garland House. Although the cryptocurrency verdict has not been announced just yet, Ripple appears to be on the verge of being carried away by the gusts of good fortune. Meanwhile, Ripple has been extremely cautious about the rumors, issuing simply the following response. There is no present intention to reach a resolution. As a result, we can't provide any further remark on the subject. The probable consequences of Warren's bill must be understood in order to prevent the criminalization of cryptocurrency possession and the imposition of harsh limits on coding and innovation in the industry by the United States. Although these steps may have a significant impact on the market, we must remain focused on our overall objective. The Bitcoin market is strong and ready to grow on its own, so we won't have to step in to stop it. As I mentioned earlier, the United States plays a significant role in the close collaboration between the Commodity Futures Trading Commission CFTC, and STAR and other prominent players in the industry. Important regulatory changes will be discussed and perhaps implemented at the forthcoming CFTC SEC conference in January. It would appear that the Commodity Futures Trading Commission is preparing to play a more central role in regulating the Bitcoin market. Recently, there has been a lot of talk about how more and more people are starting to see digital assets as digital commodities. Quite a bit has happened on the ETF front as well. Rumor has it that BlackRock is purportedly drawing closer to an FDF approval after talks with the CEC earlier this week. 
Among the noteworthy companies that the SECCC has discussed with are Franklin Templeton and Grayscale. Everyone in the cryptocurrency sector is quite excited, and I believe a huge breakthrough is on the horizon. It makes little difference what happens now because huge investors like BlackRock have already invested in the Bitcoin market, there is an evident sense of confidence and commitment emanating from their involvement. Senator Warren seemed to be in a last-ditch effort to leave her imprint before time runs out. John Dion's recent comments regarding the potential threat to cryptocurrency from Titans emphasize just how bad things are. There is, in fact, a threat. But Senator Warren's track record in the Senate also needs to be taken into account. Over the last seven years, she has introduced 30 bills, but unfortunately, none of them have been voted into law. This tendency might be a sign of Warren's success in catering to Wall Street and other strong entities, since she is often thought of as a politician whose actions are often perceived as benefiting these interests. The huge disparity between her salary and net worth makes one wonder what she has to hide, but her actions are a part of the larger political terrain we must navigate in the ever-changing Bitcoin world. The fact that conventional fiat currency has been utilized for illicit purposes far more frequently than cryptocurrency may explain why intelligence agencies like the FBI are able to trace and observe blockchain transactions. Actually, they are successfully pursuing criminals by utilizing blockchain technology. Regarding the possible risks of cryptocurrencies, you should not bury your head in the sand. Clearly, Senator Warren wants to make a big splash by becoming a prominent player in politics and the financial world. Please let us focus on the big picture rather than the details. It seems like the future of digital currencies is bright. By 2024 and 2025, in particular, I predict that XRP's value will soar. Recent events, including Pew's declaration that he will create a stable coin after a successful experiment with Ripple, provide support to this forecast. The CEO of Circle has officially confirmed the sustainability of digital commodities, and recent talks and choices are preparing the way for a massive shift in the Bitcoin industry. All the key players have reached the same conclusion, digital currencies are going to explode in popularity very soon. At this time, this is all the data I have available to you, can you handle the excitement of this exciting journey? Please note that I am not a certified financial counselor and that the intention behind these films is just amusement. I constantly stress the need of doing one's own research and talking to experts before making any big financial decisions to my viewers. Having you tune in means everything to me. Please subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it so you may be notified when I release new content. Goodbye for now.